Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Red Zoo Tier One. Today I'm going to be teaching you all how to install the uh, Revan Tech Roblox Purchasing Hub, which is an open source hub for products on Roblox. So yeah, let's get into it. Anyway, so first off, you want to have a computer or a VPS that you can host the bot on. Make sure you have a port open for the bot to run on. And uh, just a note, glitch will not work for hosting unless you've boosted the project because it needs to be up 24-7. Mepilet and Heroku will work as long as you ping them to keep them online because the database is external so it doesn't and everything is external there's no local file saved in order to allow for hosting on free services such as Mepilet and Heroku. Um, I have a database set up on MongoDB we'll go over that when we get to that point. I have a discord bot set up and token ready we'll go over that when we get to that point. I have a Roblox cookie ready we'll go over that when we get to that point and Python 3.9 installed. If you don't know how to install, or you, if you want to check your version for Python, you can type python dash dash version. If you are on Linux, you might want to type python 3 dash dash version, but that will not work on Windows because of the way that Python's made. So you should see Python 3.9 point something. The version that this was developed in is 3.9.6. .6. So there you go. And then you want to clone, you want to create a directory where you want this bot to be in. In my case, it's C uses parky desktop slash yt. And you want to cmd, cd, whatever, get into that folder so that way you can run commands. Make sure you have git installed. I'm not going to go over that in this video, but make sure you have git installed, otherwise this won't work. And, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to stuff. Um. Then you uh, want to run the command that you can copy from there. I'm going to have to do something different because of the way I'm doing this today. Uh, you do not have to do that normally. If you just copy and paste this, it should work perfectly fine. But in my case, I have to add the dash B uh, development for uh, tutorial reasons. Anyways, once that is done, you'll see all this. And then it should say done. And once it's done that, you should be able to go into this folder here and see all the stuff. If you do not see the stuff, you did something wrong, and go ahead and try again. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to come over to bot, library, bot. In my case, yeah, and just go over to there. Then you want to clone this, copy and paste this example config.json, and you want to rename it to config.json. And then you can edit this, you can delete this, and edit this, open my code, and it, you're going to see this. So let's go over every single parameter you want to fill in. So for token, that's going to be your Discord bot token. You want to get that from your Discord developer portal, you create an application, and then you go over to bot and create a bot, there should be like a prompt or something like that. And then where it says token, you want to copy the token. And make sure you have privileged gateway intents, presence intent, and server members intent turned on. And make sure you have public bot turned off, so that way only you can invite the bot, unless if you want this to be a public bot. Once you have put in the token, you want to make sure you have your prefix set. So this can be, in my case, I'm just going to leave it as dot, so that way it doesn't n interfere with other bots in my Discord server. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I'm not actually inviting it to my test bot Discord server, but yeah, just, uh, you can change the prefix to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as period today. And then for owner's ID, you want to go to Discord, settings, advanced, and make sure you have developer mode turned on. Then you want to come over to your username, wherever it is, and you want to right click and hit copy ID. And then you want to paste this in here, and if you want to have other owners, then you also want to add someone else in there, like, for example, I'll add him. But in this case today, I'm only going to keep that one owner ID. And then for a guild, we're going to come over here, and this is the guild it's going to be in. This is, or the server, they're actually called guilds, just so you know. Um, you right-click on that, and you paste that into there. And then for standard output, this is a channel that all logs will be sent to that you can read. So you want to have a standard output channel created and copy the ID of that channel and paste it in here. Make sure these three items are integers and these two are strings 
This you do not need to worry about, just leave it to true, it's not actually used yet, it might be in a future version, or it might be removed entirely in a future version. And the MongoDB URL, we want to go back over to Google, and then your organization, so you want to create a project, I'm going to call it Hub in this case, um, make sure you have yourself so this is the project going, create the project, and you want to build a database. You can create a free one. So just so you know, these will eventually size up on their own automatically if you do not do anything. So be aware that if this starts to become too large, like the database, it will automatically scale up and it will try to charge you. Um, you cannot, I mean, if you, if you pay for it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. If you pay for like a dedicated one or a paid version of this tier, like you choose like a higher tier that's paid, it might automatically scale, so be aware you might get charged more every month if your group becomes larger. So just create a cluster, and then it is going to take a while to be created, so while it's doing that, we're going to move on to the next step, which is getting your Roblox cookie from the account that you want to create uh, developer products from. So you want to go into the place, and I'm going to blur out the advertisements because I'm not going to use people free ads. Um, and then you want to go over here. I will start with elements, and then you want to go over to application, and then you're going to see all these cookies, all that kind of stuff. I actually am blurring all of this out, so sorry about that. Um, but I'm I'm going to unblur this for a second. You want to get this one right here that's called Roblox Security. And you want to click on that, and down here there's going to be a cookie value, we'll say like something like warning, should do not share this, saying this will allow someone to log in to use and steal your robux and items, which is true, don't, don't give this to anyone else. And then you want to copy the entire thing by uh, doing control A and control C, or just dragging your mouse over all the items and copying it. Um, and then you want to go back into here, and paste it in there, and save it and then for the api key I, I recommend you generate a random string for this you can do this using console um can you do this using console inside of visual studio code which i totally forgot how to open and i i yeah i use visual studio code never i'm joking i use it all the time i just don't know the key binds <laughs> uh you can go terminal new terminal and you can run python and you can import random and then random dot new or not random you can just generate a random string using random i don't care how you do it but today i'm just going to be using test i but like i said generate something random for that now let's go back and check on our database it is still being created so yeah there you go so make sure you have all this filled in um there's going to be a lot of stuff blurred here just in case but i will regenerate all the tokens and stuff once this is done so yeah i will be back to you guys in just a moment when the database has been created all right and we are back with the database up and running so the first thing you want to do is you want to go into the cluster you want to go to collections and you want to add my own data you want to enter the database name of data and the collection name of products and create and then you also want to create another one called users. And now that that is done, you should be able to use the bot perfectly fine after we get the connection running. So go back to databases and you want to hit connect. And you want to create a... Um, you want to create a database user. So um, I'm going to auto-generate a secure password. So in this case, I'm actually just going to show it to you guys because we do need to have this on standby. So I would copy this and save it somewhere. In my case, I'm just going to save it over here because I'm lazy. I'm going to hit create database user. And then we're going to choose a connection method. And we're going to connect to your application using clusters, native drivers. And, oh, sorry. I, we forgot that we need to allow access from anywhere. So I would just recommend doing this because this is the fastest way to do it. Um, but if you want to be more secure, then I would change that. And then you want to choose a connection method, 
uh, you want to choose connect your, your application the middle one that says connect your application using MongoDB's native drivers and then you want to go in here Python so version 3.12 or later and then we want to copy this go back in here paste it and right here where it says password you're going to want to fill out the password and you can save that and now we're done with configuration it looks like so now you can close up this and close up whatever you want now that we don't need it anymore and so the next step is going to be run the bot using executing bot launch, launcher py so this is actually outdated i wouldn't recommend doing it this way it won't work if you do it that way you need to go to the main directory and you want to type cmd to open up cmd and then you want to type python bot slash launcher dot python if you are on linux you want to type python 3 otherwise just type python and then hit enter and you will see the bot bot start up but first it's going to give us this error what 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 is that about well first let's close the bot and well what's it about is where is the bot there's no bot here it's just me and Dr. Redacted, or yeah. So, what you want to do is you want to go to OAuth 2, and you want to click down here. You want to click bot application dot commands just to be on the safe side, and just look through this. Think of anything else you might eventually want to do. No, nothing. Okay, and then you want to go down to administrator, and you want to copy this. Go to a new tab and paste it in there. And then you want to go in here and select the server that you want to add this to. Now this is going to be blurred because I have some personal servers on here that I have my name in and that have like where I live and kind of stuff. So I, I blurred that out. So sorry about that. Um, but once you've gone and selected your server and authorized it, you'll notice that it has joined the server. That's cool. Um, and it will also support slash commands because we allowed it to have slash commands. So that way in the future when I update this bot to have slash commands, it will work. So now we want to go back over here, back to CMD. And then we want to type Python or Python 3 bot forward slash launcher dot py. And then you'll notice that the bot will send messages in here. This is telling us, this is the output. As you can see, the help cog is ready, the product cog is ready, the user cog is ready, and the website cog is ready. So we can do exclamation mark profile and we'll see that, oh wait, sorry, pro, dot profile, I forgot that I have the prefix set to dot, and it will say, I was unable to find an info in progress with one, but we can do dot help and see all the commands. As you can see, we have all these commands, so we want to do dot create product, and then we can call this product tester. Testing system price of one, and we want to add an attachment. So I'm gonna blur this out because this is my videos folder, and there's some private projects that I'm working on that I don't want you guys to know about yet in there. So I'm gonna blur that out, and it, it will tell you it's not recommended that you delete this message because this is the message. This is this is the exact thing that will be sent to your users when they buy it, which will allow them to download it. Um. So then once you're done adding attachments, you can add more than one if you want. Uh, so if you want to, you can have more than one. In this case, I'm just going to say done. And it's uh, going to say creating final messages may take a moment. It will clear up all of the old messages and it, it will allow you to confirm the product. So you want to confirm all information in here and then you want to hit the check mark. And then it will create the product. We can make sure that this was created by typing exclamation mark products and it should say Oh wait, not period products, I'm sorry. And it will say, here's all the information that is get available to get for the server tester, testing system, product price one. And that's the bot setup done. Now if we, uh, we can give me a product, so I can do give, give, if you, imp if you import the right thing, then it should be able to actually do it. Um, it's possible that it actually did give it to me. Is unable to give me. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so I just remembered. I haven't been verified. That's why it's unable to give me a product. I'm stupid. <laughs> <coughs> so now what we want to do is set up the Roblox bot. 
Roblox part so that way we can actually get this all set up. So what you want to do is you want to go into the Roblox and open this file called rph.rbxl. So you're going to get this which will show up like this. I haven't actually pushed an update to the system yet. So I will be right back. I need to grab a different rph.rbxl. So I will be right back. Alright, now that I'm opening the correct rph.rbxl, I had to open this one just because this one actually has local updates that are needed. So first thing you want to do is you want to go in here and update all this information. So you want to update server with the IP http colon slash slash IP colon port. Um, so in which case it's this, I'm actually going to go start up the, th what this is actually on, because this is on a local, not, this is on a VPS, so that way you guys don't have to see my IP. I'm going to go ahead and quickly actually start up this bot that's on the VPS, if you give me one moment. So that way we can continue with the tutorial. You want to get the proper IP, which in my case it's going to be this right here. So I'm going to copy that and put it right here. API key is going to be test. And then in here where it says the place to create the dev products at, you want to go over to whatever place you have this published to, which in this case is going to be this one for me. And so you want to go to configure experience because this is where you actually want the ID from. Okay, because this is where you create developer products. So you want to get the ID from right here. So copy that and paste this in here. And if you can't tell, I've already uh, created this tutorial. Tutorial. I just had to redo it. Um, and then you want to publish this place. I'm going to quickly overwrite this to a different game because I'm actually, yeah. So I'm going to overwrite this to a different game. Okay, and once it's done that... Make sure your system is online by going to the IP that it has and make sure you get a forward slash. Make sure you get something out of it, for, for example, V1 products. Huh. So, I think Google's broken because this is not showing anything up. That's funny. HDB. Huh. Oh, there we go. I don't know why I was doing that. That was probably due to one of my extensions I have on. Yeah, anyways, you should see something like this. It will probably look more like this, but that's just because I have a formatter extension, which was probably causing that issue that didn't allow us to see it for whatever reason. But yeah, you'll see all of that stuff. So make sure your bot server is online, and then when you hit play, you will see... We are testing this in studio, so that way we can create a purchase without it going off. And it will come up with this. I I guess this fix didn't get pushed. I will be right back. Just give me one moment. Alright, sorry about that. I just had to update something inside here. There's a few bugs I'm still working on. I'm just creating this video early. So that way you guys... So that way I can add this when the official release gets done. Anyways, so you shouldn't get any errors in output on like I did. So you'll get this message saying, Exclamation mark verified yield something this is a randomly generated code so we're gonna go into the discord and we're gonna do dot verify dao tv oh and it, it appears that it has done that because i still left this bot on so i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that bot and now if we do dot profile we should see that i am now available and if we run the dot give product command again we will see that it actually gives me a product and we can revoke products and it will revoke the product and we can do dot profile yeah all of that jazz so now that we hit done oh yeah sorry uh this needs to be updated to be post request all all Still a few bugs I'm ironing out before the official release is done. Like I said, this video is actually being done before the official game. I mean, before the before it's actually officially out. So now if we rejoin, we should see that this is actually working. And we can go and add this to cart. And it's going to be in the cart. Now if we hit checkout, you will see, would you like to buy 865, whatever. This is your user ID followed by random numbers. These random numbers really don't matter. 
it's more of so you can check the group purchases if they say they didn't receive their product or whatever you can check the group purchases see how much they got charged that kind of stuff see if they actually bought it and as you'll see it will remove that from there and as you can see I did not have the products before and now if we go ahead and look I now own the product tester so this system currently does not support the automatic sending of a message saying that you bought the product so right now you have to manually type retrieve tester which shouldn't be that big of a deal um so and as you can see if we go up here to youtuber the youtube bot you will see that thanks for your purchase thank you for the purchase of tester please get it by using the links below and you will see the link below uh, so no problems but no problems and there you go i bought the product so there you go that's how you set up the bot. If you have any questions or if I was going too fast or anything like that, you can join the Read on Tech Discord server, come over to community support, and I will be there possibly. I will usually be there as soon as you ask a question. Sometimes I'm not because in this case this person asked a question and I was on the plane so I was unable to respond to them. Um, but usually I'll be able to respond to you as soon as you ask a question. So if you ever have any questions, or you're having issues getting the bot working, or something like that, I am willing to help you. Just come in here and ask a question, and be nice about asking questions. If I'm con because I can get confused also, so I might ask you a ton of questions when helping you to s solve something. So please be patient with me, and I'll be patient with you back. Okay, that's how the community support works. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know by dropping a like, subscribing, and sharing for more videos like this. And I'm going to go fix some bugs, and peace out.